Okay, so hi everyone. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some sub program questions and um, I'm going to answer them but also talk you through what we mean by sub programs and hopefully it's going to make some sense. Okay, so first of all, we should know that sub programs are small programs that have been written to perform a specific task. So it's just a regular algorithm that is doing some sort of processing. But the idea of a sub program, like a small program, um, is that it can be used by another program and it can be reused and um, used over and over again. And therefore, it will make your main program shorter because it doesn't need to rewrite those lines of code, those instructions, because all my main program will do is say, actually, this bit of program has already been written. Um, and it just uses the name of the sub program. It call, it's what's known as using or calling the sub program. Now, there's two types of sub program. There are functions and there are procedures. Both of them run, um, run lines of code and they might do some sort of process on that code. Um, but a function will create, like do some calculations and then have a result. And that result will need to be returned back to the main program. Now, both of them also can receive what's known as parameters. Now, that's receiving data from the main program. If they're doing a calculation um, specific for the main program, then the main program needs to say, well, can you do that calculation on this data, please? So let's have a look at this one. And we're going to work through it um, directly and see if this actually um, helps you understand it better. So. We've got a kitchen computer system that uses a function called new balance. So new balance is the identifier of the function. So the name of the function to calculate a student's new account balance when they pay for a meal. So think about at school, you've got your school system that um, calculates how much you've got left on your balance for your meals. So it says here, for example, if a student with an account balance of 9.5, that's £9.50, has a meal costing 2.2 .2 or £2.20, the new balance function should return the new balance of £7.30. And if you can see that, that's quite clear, isn't it? £9.50 minus £2.20 results in £7.30. And they've just paid for a meal from their overall balance. So the question we've been given is write an algorithm for this function. And the algorithm needs to take the student's account balance as a parameter, take the cost of the meal as a parameter and return the new account balance, okay? So when we talk about the word parameter, that's basically the data that it is receiving from the main program. And if you think about it, your new balance function could, is, is able to do all of these calculations, but it needs to know how much your balance is at the start and how much the meal is so that you can actually calculate it. So let's write it here. OK, now, first of all, whenever we're writing a function or a procedure um, in the exam. So here we are being told it's a function, but in the exam, they might say to you write a sub program and you have to try and figure out whether it's a procedure or a function. Now, this one returns the new account balance and therefore this is a function. OK, so it returns some data back to the main program. So we are creating a function and that function is called new balance. OK. Now, this is where we receive the data OK, from the main program and we're receiving it. And it's known as a parameter. Now, it's just it is basically just the data is held in uh, variable names. And so we've got to think about it hasn't given us those parameter names and then we come up with it. So I might call it. Um, we've got to be careful here because we've got an identifier here called um, new balance. So I might kind of, I might say um, current balance. So the main program will say, I want to use the new balance function. I want it to do this calculation for me. I don't want to have to write the own bit, all of the code myself. But I need to send that £9.50 to it, which is the current balance. And we separate our parameters, the data that we're sending through, by a comma. And it also needs to have the cost of the meal. So should we call it meal cost? That kind of is a meaningful variable name. So we're receiving these two parameters, how much the um, balance was in the first place 
and how much the meal cost is. That way, the function is able to do its calculation. Now, we are we are um, working on a, um, a, a structure, and therefore we're going to use indentation to make it a little bit easier to to read. So you do indent when you're writing a, a sub program. Okay, so we know as a function, it's going to return a value um, once it's done the calculations. Uh, it's called new balance and be very careful. I've used exactly the same um, case. So it's all lowercase in this, in, in this one. And then inside the brackets is the data that we're receiving. Now, in some cases, the procedure might not receive any parameters, but we can look at that another time. This, this is receiving two. So now we need to do that calculation. And it's a relatively simple algorithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually calculate what our new balance is, how much we've got left. And so basically I'm going to say, um, I don't want to call it new balance, we've got to be really careful because that's what the, um, I'm going to call it updated. Updated balance, okay? So update or updated balance. So updated balance, we are going to assign, and remember the current balance is just holding a value in it. And in this example, it's going to be holding 9.5. So updated balance is our current balance minus 50 pound 20, which is held in this meal cost. And so we are going to minus meal cost. Be very careful, these are variable names and therefore you do not put spaces. Now that's it, that's calculating now our updated balance. What the balance is now minus how much we are taking out of that balance. The only other thing we must do because we're writing a function is we have to return the value back to the main program. So we just say return and we are returning the value that is held in this updated balance. Variable. Once we've finished it, that's it. that's everything that we need to do. And so therefore we just end function. We're saying it's done, we've finished it. And that's the absolute nutter um in to to total of the um the calculations that you need to do there. That's the function written and it's worth four marks in the exam. They have given quite a lot of um lines here, so don't let that um put you off. It is literally just four lines of code. Now you'll always get maybe a data type question here as well. So you'll see it says state the data type of the value returned by this function and justify your answer. Well, we know that we're returning updated balance and we know that updated balance was in the example, we've got 9.5 minus meal cost. So we know updated balance is holding 7.3. And straight away, you should be able to say then that 7.3, we know for a fact is a real number so we're going to say it's real you can use float but um in the exam they will use the term real so it is important for you to understand that terminology and the justification for this is that it has a decimal place or is a, num a number a number with a decimal place basically it is trying to show the mother now, in the exam, you're also probably going to be asked, so if we see here, we've been asked to write the function. Well, quite often, they will put um, an, an extra question in here, and they'll say, okay, well, how about you now write the main program that uses this function? And that's what's going on here. So it says the kitchen computer system uses an algorithm to decide if the student has enough money on their account to pay for the meal. The account balance and the meal cost are entered and the algorithm outputs a suitable message depending on if the student has enough money on their account to pay for their meal. Write the algorithm that uses, they might say the word calls, but um, I've seen that they often use the word uses. So write the algorithm that uses this function. It must ask the user how much their meal costs and how much money the student currently has. It needs to output if the meal can be purchased and then calculate the new balance using the subprogram or tell the student that the balance is too low. So let's have a go at doing that. So let me get my text. Um, let's do that. Right, okay. So write the algorithm that uses this function. It must ask the user how much their meal costs and how much money the student currently has. So we might say uh, meal cost 
equals and we're going to ask the user to input how much is the meal. We also need to find out how much they've currently got on their account. So let's call that the current balance. And we're going to ask them how much, how much is on the balance. Okay, now we are writing this in OCR reference language, so you do not have to type fast here. It's just slightly simpler. So what we're now doing is we now need to look to see if the student is able to pay for this meal. So it needs to output if the meal can be purchased and then calculate the new balance using the sub program or tell the student that the balance is too low. So let's have a look at this. What we need to do is we need to say, first of all, if they've even got enough on their current balance, um, that more than the meal cost. So if current balance is greater than or equal to meal cost, okay, so only if it is greater than or equal to meal cost can they actually um, purchase a meal. If they don't have enough on their balance, we can say straight away, you don't have enough money on your balance. We can't even, we can't even sell it to you. So here is if the current balance is greater than or equal to meal cost, it means that they do have enough money. And what we need to do now is we need to calculate how much their updated balance would be after they've had their meal, after they've paid their meal. And this is where we're going to be using or calling this function, the sub program. Now, because it is a function, it is returning that value and therefore we need to hold whatever is returned in a variable so that we can use it in our main program. So I might call it um, here again, updated balance, because that makes sense. We're going to hold whatever is returned in a variable called updated balance. And so it's here where we go, okay, so now we need to call, and let's look at back at what it was called, and it was called the new balance function. So we want to call new balance, I think it was all in lowercase, yep. And we need to send the data through to it. Now, something that's very, very important at this stage is if you have been given the sub program, you need to look to see what order the parameters are sent to it. So this is receiving the current balance first and then the meal cost. Now, they won't necessarily be the same names as your main program. Mine is at the moment, but the most important thing is, is that I send the the number, the, the amount that is the current balance through first, and then comma, and then the cost of the meal. So I've, again, I have called it current balance. So I send the current balance first, and then I send meal cost. So all I'm doing is I'm writing this little bit of code here, which will mean that it the, the program will jump then to this bit of code. It's received the data that I've sent to it, it will do the calculation and it's going to re return this bit of data here, which in this example is £7.30. My main program, the £7.30, is going to be assigned to the updated balance variable here because I've called the new balance function. I've sent the data of how much balance we've got and how much it costs. It's going to return the updated balance and it's going to be assigned to this variable here. So we've done that, updated balance is now showing how much we've got left. And then what we need to do now is we need to say else because they either can have it and we need to find out and we need to update their balance else. And it says here, it outputs a suitable message depending on if the student has enough money on their account. Um, actually, what we might do is we might print we might say your new balance is, and then we're going to add updated balance. So that's a suitable message to let the student know that that's their new updated balance. And then if they don't have enough money, then we're going to go through the else and we're just going to say print, you do not have enough money to pay for this meal. That's the end of the program. This is the main program 
asking the user to enter how much the meal is, how much they've got on their balance. It checks to see if they've got enough in the first place. And if they have, then it will call the new balance function, sending the, the balance they've got currently, cost of their meal, and that new balance function will return the, the um, amount that they've got left on their balance, so their updated balance, to, um, to this variable here. The rest of it is just basic string concatenation. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense.